so if you guys don't know, this past weekend, I was hanging out with Mr. Beast, which was a very random thing to have happen. One day, I got a call from him, and he said, Hey, Ludwig, you should come and see me and hang out with me. To which I naturally replied, Yeah, when? To which he replied, Uh, tomorrow. Just come tomorrow. I can't go tomorrow. I, you know, I'd have to, I'd have to book the flight and... Well, I also have a, like my, to record my podcast in a couple days. Just bring your podcast. Right, okay, uh, yeah, but I also have, you know, my, like my girlfriend. Bring your girlfriend. Okay, you're not getting it. I can't make it that quick. I'll do you one better. How about I come next weekend? I'm not used to people saying no to me, but all right. And that was the interaction. And I texted Jimmy like some pretty standard questions. Hey, where do I show up? What do I do when I arrive? Yada, yada. To which he replied, here's my personal assistant, ask him everything. So I did exactly that. I have to confirm that I am legally allowed to mention this. I think I'm good. While I was on my way, I was talking to the assistant, I was setting everything up, and he was like, hey, oh yeah, by the way, just make sure to sign this, we have like our standard NDA. I don't even know if I'm allowed to mention that I signed it. I think I am, I just reread it, because I, because I don't know. I don't know. I have never signed one before. I don't leak. I'm airtight around these parts. Eight hours after being there, I get a call. And in my phone, I have him as Jimmy Beast. And he calls me and he goes, you're in town? Yeah, I got on a plane. I've been here for like eight hours. He's like, huh, I didn't even know. You should have told me. That is something I did do. How do you think I am here? Anyway, he comes over. And for the first time ever, I meet Mr. Beast and Carl in real life. And the first thing that I noticed, which was the biggest shock of all time, Carl is not short. I didn't know this. He's like about six feet tall. You met him at the 100 Thieves Cash App compound? Yeah, I did. And I completely forgot. My entire stay at Mr. Beast's place kind of felt like I was his mistress. Because I was like flown in. He gave me this beautiful place to stay in. He barely would show up because he'd be working all day and then he'd come in the late hours. He'd be like, are you ready for me? I'd be like, yes, please, Jimmy. <laughs> We'd hang out for a few. He'd disappear into the night. I felt like Julia Roberts in Pretty Woman. Basically, the entire reason I was there was one, to hang out, but two, we had a $50,000 poker match scheduled. What I didn't know was that they're all so good at some other shit. He was like, yo, you play basketball? The real answer is yes. I played basketball in college. Not D1, intramural. But, you know, I thought I had, like, a good grip on these things. And he's like, all right, that's awesome. I'm going to invite some people over to play basketball. Me, thinking this would be casual, you know? Like, it would be, you know, Jimmy, Carl, and Chris, and me playing basketball, just shooting some hoops. That was not the case. Because I forgot about one thing. I forgot about Chandler. Chandler... His brother show up? You guys are spamming LeBron. Chandler's brother might as well be LeBron. That dude is six foot eight. I think he is eye to eye with LeBron James. It was so embarrassing. I shot so many air balls. We were playing 5v5, like full court basketball, and God bless, there was this guy there who was like five foot eight. He had glasses on, not trying to insinuate anything. I'm just trying to give you an image of who this guy was. And so all these like Titans, it literally looked like the Monstars versus Jordan were matching up against each other. And then they're like, yo, Ludwig, you get Zach. And I was like, yes, let's go. Which is what I thought. And then, you know, like I thought we'd be homie to homie. I was like, yo, what if we just like make a rule that we don't run too much? Because I'm out of shape. I've been trying to lose weight, but I have not been grinding like cardio. And basketball is an exhausting sport because if they sprint down the court and it's man-to-man -man coverage, I also need to sprint down the court. He looks me dead in the eyes. He goes, I ran track for four years. I run a four-minute, 50-second mile. No shot. I promise you the guy shot the ball like this, but it didn't matter because he sprinted down the court and he had like three free shots before I could get my fat ass over there. I'm not even exaggerating when I say I hit one shot from distance. I hit one. Everyone popped off for me. Pretty much everything else I was doing was cracking jokes that people would give me pity laughs. Like someone would kick a ball and I'd go, damn, we're not calling that. Someone hit my shoulder would be like, technical, what's going on, ref? <laughs> I'd do 30 second timeout for calls. It's funny because I have a catchphrase. You guys know the catchphrase. Mogul moves. Which is a catchphrase that I created 
a few years ago when I was reading Walter Isaacson's biography of Steve Jobs, which is a super good book. And then I used the phrase mogul moves around that time. Somewhat ironically, at like dumb shit. I just shit and only had to wipe once, mogul moves. I just took a shower and washed the dishes at the same time, mogul moves. Hanging out with Mr. Beast? That's a different level. He's really fucking out here doing mogul moves and shit. This is a real thing that happened. I was like, yo, I'm going to get Taco Bell. Do you want anything? I was on the phone with him. He's like, yeah, get me one of every soda. I was like, what? I hung up. Carl's with me. I was like, he doesn't want that, right? He's like, no, he probably just wants like a few sodas to just pick one of. You know, like Steve Jobs would do if he looks at like three different iPhone frames. And I was like, I'll just get him Baja Blast. That's pretty much the same thing. All right, let's keep it a stack. <laughs> we were setting up the stream for the poker thing. And he's like, ah, and he looked at it, he like crossed his arms. He's like, I'm going to call my poker guy, like a poker pro. He's like, no, he does poker streams and he sets them up and he like calls this random guy and he just like, a, he's like, can you come right now to set this up? And like within 15 minutes, the guy's there setting things up. I have this, but it's just me calling slime over and over again. Slime, can you just go to the bank and pull out like 50 bucks in ones and then we'll just spread it out and make it look maybe like 50K. Yeah. And then can you set up the stream too? And then can you also get food? I think Mr. Beast is 100% going to be the first YouTube billionaire. Because, like, this guy's on the hustle grustle, dude. He's Sigma as fuck. Me, after doing the subathon and being the biggest streamer in the world for a month? <sighs> anyway, we do the poker stream. If you didn't watch the video, check it out because I played against Mr. Beast in poker. We each put up $25,000, 50K total, and winner took it all. I'm going to spoil it right now. I lost $25,000. Not even through bad poker play. I lost it through degenerate gambling where we each put up $25,000 on one all in hand. On my way out, as I'm packing my bags after a wonderful weekend of hanging out with everyone, I took one parting gift. Just a small reminder of my great time hanging out with Mr. Beast. You know, the thing about it is even when you're the small creator in the group, sometimes you can get away with things that... Maybe people won't notice. And, uh, yeah, that was about it. That's the time I met Mr. Beast in real life. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's a devious lick, bitches. That's real mogul moves. <laughs>